Hey Prairie Lakes, my name is John Nance and I'm the associate campus pastor at our Cedar Falls campus. What that means for me at Prairie Lakes is that I get to work with everyone and everything connected to discipleship at our campus. Our small groups, uh, outdoorsmen, women's ministry, our care team and chaplains, as well as our mission staff and volunteers. And I love that I get to do this. Uh, it's amazing to see people engage with Prairie Lakes and to help them take steps from being spiritually curious or new to faith to growing in their walk with Jesus, from being disciple to becoming disciple makers who pour into and disciple their little Iowa. As we get started, I want to get some discussion going with your group. I want you to talk about how you first were connected to Prairie Lakes and what your favorite moment or memory is at PLC. For me, I got connected to Prairie Lakes Church about 11 years ago when I joined the staff team that helped launch our Grinnell campus. And my favorite moment at PLC has to be when I got to baptize my oldest daughter, Elin. I remember we had been talking about it very intentionally together for quite a while. And when it became clear that she understood what baptism was and wanted to take that step, it was so cool to be part of that and be the one that got to baptize her. So. Talk among your group right now. We'll put the questions on the screen, hit pause, and discuss together. So let's dive into why we're here together. Right now, you're watching this on a phone, a computer, maybe a TV in someone's family room with your group. This could be a relatively new group you're a part of, or maybe it's a group you've been meeting with for a long time. See, the whole point of a group is to connect relationally, to take steps together as you grow in your love and obedience to Jesus. I want to encourage you, even if it means stretching yourself a little bit, be vulnerable, be authentic, commit to showing up and put in the time to prepare for and engage with the content we'll be going through. I think if you do, it'll be a pretty powerful time together in your group for the next six weeks. Throughout this small group study, we'll be using content from the book, Dangerous Prayers by Craig Rochelle. The whole purpose of this study is to help us learn to authentically communicate with God when we pray. We wanna challenge you, we wanna inspire you to change how you approach your daily prayer life, to believe uh, in the power of intentional prayer and develop the courage to pray raw, daring and transformational prayers. If you're like me, praying can be hard sometimes. Maybe it was something you learned growing up attending church. Maybe it was something you did as a family around the dinner table or before bedtime. Or maybe it wasn't. Maybe you've only learned the prayers that are prayed together aloud and they're always the same, like the Lord's Prayer. I know I didn't pray a lot growing up. So as I tried to do it when I got older, it felt awkward. It can be hard to focus and your mind wanders you find yourself praying for the same things over and over, and sometimes it can just feel dull. When we look at scripture though, we see something different. Prayers that were incredibly personal, like to conceive a child, for instance, in 1 Samuel, but also prayers for the practical, for food and provision, like in Matthew 6, 11, or prayers for Israel to escape from their enemies in Psalm 59. Craig Rochelle says that in scripture, we see people who seemed to gently whisper to a loving God. Other times they yelled at him in agony and frustration. They often pleaded with God sincerely. Then later they would cry out from the depths of their anguish and rail at God like a tired toddler thrashing in the arms of a parent. They prayed for boldness to share their faith. They prayed for walls both internally and externally to fall. Daniel prayed for the mouths of lions to be shut and Jonah prayed for the belly of a hungry whale to be opened. Gideon prayed for his fleece to be dry one day and wet another. God's people prayed, whether they were giddy with joy or crushed by sorrow. Then I pray for God to bless a slice of Casey's pizza I'm about to eat and to keep me safe. So maybe you're in a similar spot. Prayer is dry. It's the same struggles and requests and it feels like you're in a rut when it comes to prayer. Well, over the next six weeks, we're gonna talk about three different prayers that will stretch our faith, expand our hearts, and open our lives to God. These three prayers are search me, break me, and send me. Next week, Kennedy is going to help us dig deeper into that first prayer of search me. But first, I'm gonna give a little context on this one and then toss it to your group for discussion. You see, this first prayer of search me is kind of a doozy. It was prayed by David in the Old Testament, and we can read about it in Psalm 139. 
In the story, a jealous King Saul falsely accused David of treason, of trying to overthrow him as king and attempting to assassinate him. Saul sends all his forces after David in an attempt to kill him and remove what he thought was a threat to his reign and authority. Furthermore, Saul claimed David wasn't faithful to his God, and this was a big deal. Uh, two different places in scripture, David was called a man after God's own heart. And now here was an angry king lying about David, his motives, and his love for God. With everything in him, David wanted to please God. He even fought against his own anger in order to protect and show honor to King Saul. Yet knowing that his motives weren't always perfect, David surrendered his heart before God and prayed one of the most vulnerable, transparent, and dangerous prayers you'll ever hear. Wanting to honor God in every aspect of his being, David prayed in Psalm 139, 23, search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. In the book, Rochelle explains, not only is this prayer difficult to pray, but it's even more challenging to apply and live out. Because if you have the courage to pray it, then you'll need to exercise the courage to live what God shows you in reply. But be forewarned, this prayer has the potential to convict you, to correct you, to redirect your life, to change the way you see yourself, to change how others see you. Okay, I've talked long enough. I'd love for your group uh, to have some discussion now. Remember, engage with one another. As the questions go up on the screen, interact with intentionality. Be courageous. I'm going to pray for your group. You can hit pause and discuss the questions on screen, and I'll be back to close this down. Let's pray. God, thank you uh, that we are able to gather together in these groups uh, and connect relationally. We know it's so important for us to connect and grow together. We ask for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit, that there would be courage and vulnerability as people share in the groups. Uh, bless these moments together. We love you and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome back. I hope you were able to have some meaningful discussion around your group. Next week, Kennedy will take us further into the heart of this dangerous prayer of search me. Here's what I want to leave you with this week though. Our prayers often revolve around what God can do for us. Sometimes we even treat God like a vending machine, expecting him to deliver for us whenever we need him to. What's so different about this dangerous prayer of search me, however, is that instead of asking God to do something for us, we're asking him to reveal something in us. So if you're ready to stop playing it safe, if you're ready to pray daring, faith-filled, God-honoring, life-changing prayers, let's stop asking what God can do for us and instead ask him to reveal something in us. Before you end your time together with your group, go around and share any prayer requests or important life updates together. And make sure to spend some time praying for those things as a group. Thanks for being a part of this dangerous prayer study. I'm excited to see all God is going to do. Next week, we'll dig deeper on this prayer of search me. We'll see you then.